Today we're going to learn how to do some simple explicit messaging using a Compact Logic 1769L16, a SIG200 Ethernet IP version, and a photo iPhone 6. We're going to manipulate some IO link data using the index structure. For extrinsic messaging, the ISDU request and the ISDU response must be configured properly in the controller tag database. The extrinsic messaging must go through the SIG200 to access IOLink index data. Five bytes are required for the request, as shown in Table 33. Eight bytes are needed for the response configuration, shown in Table 34. The payload begins at byte 9. If you haven't already done so, go to the SIGUSA.com website and download the EDS file for the SIG200 and install that in your I.O. tree. From the IODD file of the WTT12, we can see that the index 97 is the sender configuration. This has two allowed values, 0 equals sender active or laser on, and 1 equals sender not active or laser off. So when we write these values using the explicit messaging, we change the IO link data and thus turn the laser on and off. The value 1 or 0 is going to be put in the payload of the ISDU request. With a SOPA's connection to the SIG200, we can read and write to the IO-Link devices, in this case a photo eye from SIG. Click on the IO-Link devices tab to select and explore the various devices data. Here you can see the part number for this photo eye is 1072532. If you scroll down to the bottom of the page, you should see additional information including the product name and also a field for entering any index to read and write to it. Let's first check and see what data currently resides in index 97 by re using the read button. In the read results field you can see that there is one hexadecimal byte which corresponds to a value of zero. I know this is correct because the laser is on and that corresponds to the stipulation in the IODD file that the sender is active when the data is zero. To write, click the edit pencil in the upper right hand corner first. Then enter the data to be written into the write data field and click the write button. Now read the data you just entered back out to confirm. On the PLC side you can see here that I've written three rungs of logic to execute a write operation. The structure of the message is defined and can be checked in rung 17 by clicking on the ellipses. The service code is 32. This designates read and write ISDU. The class is fixed at 96. And the instance selects the SIG port you would like to read or write to. The attribute is chosen depending on if you want to read or write. In this example, the source length is going to be 5 bytes, and that corresponds to data layout of the ISDU request of table 33 shown earlier. For the source element, the destination element, you have to create two sent arrays with a size of 232 bytes. The source length should match your ISDU size. For further detail on the message structure, please contact techhelp at sick.com. The logic in rung 15 is simply to populate the index 97, the control 2, and the attribute 1. Rung 16 is used to populate the data value that is to be written. In this case, a 0 is written into byte 4 of the request structure, which is laser on. Finally, toggling rung 17 causes the execution of the message instruction, which writes a zero into index 97 of the PhotoEyes IO link structure. Back at the SOPUS view, we can read out the value to confirm our PLC logic did its job. 